thank you for doing this with me. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> Ann and Christy Santos here with Windermere. We love real estate and supporting our community. Between property showings, we love to stop at our favorite businesses, talk with local owners, and bring their stories to you. This is our Bellevue East Side. Well, hello neighbors. I'm here today in Old Town Bellevue at the corner of Main Street and Bellevue Way at Green Lake Jewelry Works. It's an amazing shop. I have to tell you, it's one of the unique jewelry shops I've ever been in. And I'm here to introduce you to Ben Marchant. Ben is one of the store managers and a senior designer here at Green Lake Jewelry Works. Welcome, Thank Ben. Thank you, and welcome to you. Yeah, Ben has an amazing story that I wanted him to share with us, so I'm going to have him just start off. Um, well, I won't bore you with the really long story, um, but I moved to Seattle in 2010. Um, my background is uh, in painting and interior design, and when I moved to Seattle, I was looking for work in that field. Um, and I happened to um, answer an ad for uh, a custom design retail um, location. At the time it was called E.E. E. Robbins, which is a uh, small family jeweler, and they wanted somebody who could draw and design uh, jewelry. Um, so that was new to me. Um, I'd never worked in the jewelry field before, but uh, there's a lot of crossover in terms of design principles from interior design to other forms of design, um, just squeezing larger objects into smaller ring-sized objects now, sure. yes, um, but similar principles, so, yeah. But you also have like a diamondology? Yes, So yes. where did you pick that up at? Uh, so that was part of a DCA diamondology course. Um, the Diamond Council of America. It's uh, basically an intensive program to learn about um, all aspects of diamonds. So where they're coming from, how they're produced, how they're cut, polished, graded. Okay. Um, yeah, learning about the, the ethical sourcing and practices of diamonds um, and how best to use that knowledge to instill confidence and comfort with the consumer who is looking to purchase diamonds. Right, because, oh gosh, the the dollar amount that you'll spend on a diamond is huge. There's a large span there. It can be, yes. Now, in that diamondology, do they include other gemstones, or is it really focused only on diamonds? This particular certification is just on diamonds. Just on diamonds. Um, yes, but we have other senior designers in the store who are uh, gemologists, so they've done the full GIA gemology course, which will include all sorts of precious gemstones and not okay. just diamonds. Okay, so we're talking painting, interior design, which you know some of you know that I'm I'm back in the architecture and design mode too. That's some of my history, and I can't imagine going into designing jewelry. So I think that's a there's a leap there of um, artistic confidence and yes. faith. Yes. Uh, it was a bit daunting at first, um, especially because, as you mentioned, um, custom jewelry can be uh, can be expensive, and of course, it's not just a monetary value, but a lot of emotional value, sentimental value. So, uh, we're yes, you have to be um, very careful um, listening to what people want and and how best to design something that doesn't just look beautiful, but is practical and functional. Um, so there was a lot to learn to begin with. Yeah, long story short, yeah. yeah. But it sounds like maybe listening is one of your natural gifts. Mm. I think that listening is a very big part of the job, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Of listening to the consumer, or the yes. client, yes. in terms of what they're looking for. What are yes. some of the stories? What have people come in looking for? There's a wide array of stories when it comes to uh, clients coming in looking for custom jewelry. I think that we primarily focus on bridal jewelry, so a lot of custom engagement rings and wedding rings. Um, but we have people come in all the time where they've, for example, inherited a lot of jewelry and they, they just want to go somewhere where they can get some, um, some knowledge about what it is they have, whether it's worth getting appraised, um, what to do with it in terms of repurposing gemstones and maybe putting them into 
uh, custom pieces that, that they would want to wear themselves. Um, so I think that's a, a big part of what we do. And we do repair and refurbishment, restoration of antique pieces as well. Gosh, that's um, a great um, thought because, yes, I have inherited a couple of pieces that they don't quite fit, but they're also like uncomfortable because mm -hmm. of the, um, the styling. Yes. Um, yes. We go all the way back yeah. into the late 1800s, uh, wow. and there's kind of like a balloon style around it that pinches my finger. Yes. So yeah, to have that remodeled or remade yeah. into something that I would wear would be... Yes. Yeah, it's a good thing yeah. to know. Yes. Yeah, jewelry styles definitely change over the decades, and what used to be fashionable or even comfortable um, might not be the case in today's modern world. So. Um, yeah, so we, we do a lot of that uh, in terms of refashioning jewelry into something that is um, appropriate for, yeah, a new new lifespan of wear. A new lifespan yeah. of wear. And mm -hmm. you mentioned style, which is also, yes. yeah, like you said, it's very, it's changing. Yes. So what yeah. kind of things inspire the style that you design to? I mean, we mm -hmm. can think of cultural or historic mm -hmm. or just... Mm -hmm. um, material, I mean, materials and things? Yes, um, I think that's where we see the most diversity. Um, so a, a lot of people will come in looking for something very clean and simple and contemporary. Other people like uh, Edwardian jewelry, so very intricate and ornate, more on the complicated side. And then we do have clients internationally um, who maybe have sort of a history of a more culturally inspired jewelry, um, whether someone's from China or India and they're bringing their notions of their traditional jewelry to us, uh, they can't find another place that will be able to make it, so we can do that for them. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of variety that we come across. What are your favorite materials, like of, of the materials? So you're, I, I've done a little bit of fine art, you know, and you might spend $20 on a tube of paint, mm -hmm. maybe $30 on a canvas, you've got brushes and things, but in this work, when we talk about design at this extent, we're talking about, you know, potentially thousands of dollars yes. in your materials. Yes. Yeah, so what are some of your favorite materials just to work with? Yeah, uh, we work with all the, the traditional precious metals. Um, platinum is certainly a beloved material in terms of its workability and its malleability. Uh, so, um, I, yeah, I would say platinum is probably my favorite metal to work with, um, mostly because our platinum smiths are, they enjoy working with platinum. It's a somewhat easier metal than, uh, than gold, but it, it also depends on the project. If we are setting a softer stone, then we'll want a softer metal to be able to form a bezel around it, for example. So then we would use 18 karat yellow gold, for example, or sometimes silver. Um, so we'll really try to match the material to the piece of jewelry and its intended purpose. Um, but we've worked with all sorts of materials, so coral, high-tech ceramic, we've done inlays of that into rings. Even little slivers of meteorite we've inlaid into rings before. We've seen a lot, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. It's like every time you answer one of my questions, my mind starts to go exploding. <laughs> But, but when you were just mentioning um, the materials and then matching them up with the hardness of the stones, um, mm -hmm. I start to think about engineering principles, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because there are, you know, there are strengths yes. of materials yes. that vary. Yes. Behind me, when I first came in, I noticed that there's a line, it looks like um, different people that are even drafting, which mm -hmm. is part of an engineering or um, architectural background. Yes, yes. So we, we have distinct departments um, that focus on the various stages involved with bringing a piece of jewelry to life. So initially there's a lot of sketching and uh, a lot of the designers nowadays are using uh, digital um, drafting tablets basically. Okay. So we're, we're drawing on the screen and eventually that will get sent over to our CAD department where they do the official modeling using uh, computer assisted drafting. Okay. And so there are jewelry specific programs which will model a design in, um, in a 3D digital space. Uh, and uh, after that we print the, the 
digital file into a wax model. And I find that this is the most useful stage where a client will be able to test out the ring on their finger um, and make sure that it fits, it looks good, the size, the shape is exactly where they want it to be. So there is a lot of engineering that goes into it. Yeah. Um, and we try to be on the forefront of innovative um, technology. So we'll really use cutting edge technology to make the process more precise, easier, more convenient, both for the client and also for our team to, to make it um, yeah, to make it come out perfectly. Come out perfectly. Yeah. So that, that wax model, it must mm -hmm. be a fairly hard wax. We've used different materials in the past. At the moment, it is actually more of a polymer, so it is kind of firmer. It is, it is harder. Firm. Yeah, it looks yeah. like a melt on their hand. Correct, <laughs> yes, kind of yes. Deal. So I, I'm just trying to I, now imagine myself as a young bride. I'm an old bride. But a young bride putting that ring on for the first time, mm -hmm. and you get to share in some of those emotions. Mm -hmm. Yes, must be pretty it, it fun is. part of the job. It, it is. I, I can't deny that I enjoy that part of the job for sure. Um, <laughs> we get to share in people's uh, oftentimes most special and intimate moments. Um, mm -hmm. A ring is a really significant. A milestone in a lot of couples lives so to be a part of that joy and that happiness and sometimes there's a little bit of um, ant nervous anticipation um, so we're we're there through all of that so we're absorbing a lot of emotions but we're also kind of guiding the emotions sure. and um, hopefully allowing it to uh, come from the ring, from the design, whether it's a ring or a pendant or earrings, a necklace, and translate that to uh, a union between people. Um, so I think whether it's a couple or family members purchasing a gift for other family members, um, the main point is bringing people together through the use of custom jewelry. Um, and so it's very rewarding, long story yeah. short. And creating yeah. something very memorable. I um, yes. you used uh, the word sentimental value, which yes. there is in jewelry. There is. You know, sometimes even in um, you know, faux gems. You know, so there oh. may not be a lot of monetary value, but mm -hmm. definitely yeah. sentimental value yes. attached back to yes. those pieces. Yeah. And, and that reminds me, a, a lot of clients will come in with inherited jewelry that may or may not be authentic or real gemstones, but it does have a lot of meaning and a lot of memories associated with fathers, mothers, grandparents, and sometimes we will be tasked with replicating that but using um, real gold or transplanting a cubic zirconia with a real diamond or sapphire. Sure. Um, so we're bringing back the original spirit of the ring but built to last even longer yeah. and still inspiring those same memories. Yeah, for the next yeah. hand down. Yes, yeah, sometimes. Hand off. Yes, yeah. yeah. The store, your store here at um, Green Lake Jewelry Works has not only the beauty of individual customized design but there's some pretty amazing designs right here in the store mm -hmm. can you talk to us a little bit about where those inspirations come from are yes. they designers that are here behind us yes. yours yes uh, so thank you for the compliments <laughs> um, we do take pride in uh, all of the jewelry that we showcase in the display cases some of them will be my design some of them will be my colleagues designs or uh, designs from previous employees over the years we tend to showcase our more popular uh, design pieces but at any given time we'll have a, a nice array kind of a, a real sprinkling of different styles which is um, mostly used to serve as um, starting points on um, testers for people to come in and learn about which styles they prefer to wear which styles they don't like um, so so yeah, it's a mixture, but all of us play a role in the designs that you see in the cases. So they're not designed elsewhere by other people. Right. Yeah. yeah so you can meet the designer of the piece that you're going to wear. Like, how incredible <laughs> mm -hmm. is that? Mm -hmm. I mean, just that by itself. I have mm -hmm. no idea who made my rings, yeah. right? But I would love yeah. to say, you know, 
Ben made my like yeah. I know this guy. Mm -hmm. So that's a pretty spectacular thing to be able to say. Yes, and and furthermore, I encourage clients to uh, believe that it's a collaboration. So. Mm -hmm. It's not just me that's designed the piece, but it's it's a real working relationship with the client, so they can feel like they were a designer of their own piece as well, and I think that adds even more um, value. Yes. Oh, sure, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. Good point. Yeah. Great point. <laughs> so Ben, when you're not here, like designing and like answering my kind of questions about <laughs> jewelry, what do you like to do here in the area? Um, it's, well, I live in West Seattle, so I, I don't um, stay in Bellevue all that often. But um, there's things in West Bellevue to do. What kind of, or uh, yes. West Seattle? Yes. As well, but what kind of things do you like to do, like when you, on your off time? Okay, on my off time, uh, I'm more of an introvert, so I I do a lot of painting at home, um, drawing, listening to music. I'm learning the viola at the moment, uh, and I enjoy riding on my motorcycle. Um, yeah. That's, Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> so the, you are very, very centered in that art world. Yes. Design is a, a big part of my life, yes. So I'm, I feel fortunate that I can utilize those skills and that passion and here. And express it. Yes. Yeah, in yeah. such a beautiful way. Yeah. Yeah. So where did you grow up? Uh, so I grew up mostly in London as a, as a child. Um, my father is English, and so until I was about 12 years old, most of my childhood was in, was in England. Uh, and then I moved to Washington, D.C. as a teenager and went to high school on the East Coast. On the East Coast? Yes. Secondary education, was that yes. East Coast as well? That was, yes. Okay. And I, I went to university in Connecticut. Um, and after that, I lived in Japan briefly. That was my original uh, major in college was East Asian Studies. Okay. Uh, and I think I learned a lot of... Um, the, the culture of aesthetics through a lot of Japanese design uh, and art at the time and that was slowly influencing how I would then use my artistic skills in the future. Absolutely. Um, All of those things yeah. influence the directions that we go. Yes. Yeah. And, and then you, uh, you came to the West Coast. Yes. And what brought you here? So I lived in Toronto for three years. That's where I studied interior design and I wasn't able to uh, remain in, in Canada because of visa issues and so I basically came up with a short list of m the three cities that I thought would resemble Toronto and, and have a similar level of diversity and, um, and opportunity and Seattle was at the top of that list so I I uh, kind of took a leap of faith and moved here in, in 2010, and and I I love it. It's a beautiful city. So you're 13 years yeah. in. 13 years in, yeah. 13 year native. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely an area of diversity. I have to yeah. say, uh, as a transplant myself, it's been yeah. one of the most beautiful things to experience mm. in life is this kind of diversity in so mm -hmm. many areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thanks for sharing that. Yeah, you're welcome. Ben, it's been fantastic to get to know you. Thank you, Christy. Thank you for the interview. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. I'm happy to talk more about Green Lake Jewelry Works. And um, anybody watching this, please feel free to come in anytime. Always welcome. You will not be disappointed. Mm -hmm. You will not be disappointed. Well, thanks again. Thank you very yeah, much. Very Thank much. you. <laughs>uh, and we all played a role in painting the, the floor using really? concrete paint. So I did a few um, touches on the, the ladybugs and uh -huh. the, the, uh, the bird in the back there. But all of the employees had a role in 
finishing the wood, staining the wood, sanding it. So, it's so like there's ownership here. There is ownership. <laughs> we yes. Are. This yes. Is us. Yes. Well, I liked it because when I come in, like it is unique, and I've used that. I'm probably overusing that word <laughs> for this particular uh, interview, but this is the unique jewelry work it store is. for me. It's yeah. come so different. Yeah. Yeah, so show us a few of your cases and what's in them. Absolutely. So we have designs scattered throughout the store. This particular area is featuring um, some of our Ficeri jewelry artists. So these are not necessarily bridal pieces, but are unique. Um, they are cross-cultural oftentimes and inspired by... Um, other design prints, gifts. Um, so not just engagement rings and wedding rings, but anniversaries, birthdays, um, holiday gifts. So there's a really nice mixture, and this is changing all the time, and we're adding new pieces all the time as well. So this is a particular uh, painted enamel, which is quite unique. You don't see oftentimes. So if you're looking for something a little bit different, um, and a lot of it is still very classic, um, but different yeah something different. that you won't find in other jewelry stores definitely would be yeah. um, an amazing gift beautiful mm -hmm. gift <laughs> oh yeah 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 decorated for the season um and of course it wouldn't be a a good seattle store if we didn't have coffee ready to go <laughs> for everybody coming in especially as we go into winter time yeah warm and um, toasty and we were yes. greeted with some nice beverage offerings when we came in Fresh chocolate chip Fresh cookies chocolate chip as well. Cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Baked on site. <laughs> yes, it is. Yep, they are. Well, show us yeah. some of the designers that are in some of the cases here. Uh, yes. Here's the Montana sapphires. So these are our Montana sapphires, which are beautiful stones. Not many people know about Montana sapphires. They are oftentimes green and watery blue and teal colored. So perfect colors for the Pacific Northwest. Um, this is a design sketch from one of our senior designers. And this is an example of how the, a, a design will begin. So we, we start by sketching it out um, and being able to visualize it. Usually we'll, we'll know the details of the center stone by that point, so everything is drawn to scale right from the beginning. And this case is featuring more of the classic solitaire designs. Solitaire. Yeah, sorry, some of the... And you could put in stone in there. That is correct, yes. These are really kind of like placeholders, if you will, um, but you can change the materials, you can change this, the size and the shape of the center stone. It doesn't have to be a diamond. We love working with colored gemstones, lab-created stones as well. This is also an initial sketch. That's correct, yeah. Yeah, and we the sketches oftentimes are very artistic, but ultimately we want the finished piece to be the so art piece. The, the art. Yes. Yeah. This is just to give us an idea, like yes. the direction that we want to go, yes. what we want to see. Exactly. Yeah. It's the, the sizzle before actually tasting the, the steak. <laughs> yeah, the sizzle before the steak. I love that. <laughs> and these are halo designs. Some sapphires, rubies, yeah. diamonds. Is the yellow topaz? Uh, that is it's actually a sapphire, I believe, which really? is a very unique and rare color for a sapphire. Yeah, very golden yellow. Yep, yellow sapphire. Wow. Yeah, beautiful. Um, they come in the, the full range of uh, colors of the rainbow. Um, some colors are more rare than others. And these are uh, wedding bands, so oftentimes uh, a lady will be coming in and not really sure what type of a wedding band will match up well with her engagement ring. So we've got a nice assortment so you can really take your time, play around and see what works, what doesn't work. And ultimately, blending your favorite design elements into one unique custom ring is oftentimes the way to, the, the way to go. To yeah. Here we have more antique-inspired jewelry, whether it's Art Deco, Art Nouveau, typically characterized by more intricate, more ornate, uh, detailed design elements. 
You mentioned Edwardian. Yes. We were speaking earlier. Yes. So is that more of an antique style as well? It or? is, yes. Uh, and Edwardian um, can, can mean a few different things, but typically it's going to have that more complex um, design elements, oftentimes featuring hand engraving and filigree elements. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, usually a style of ring where a lot of designers will uh, experience a little hesitation if they have to sketch an Edwardian <laughs> style ring. It takes a lot of uh, concentration to do that. Concentration and, yeah. and knowledge of the style. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You need to be a little bit of an expert in that field. Yeah. That this, this case is quite popular. I think that there is the assumption in Bellevue that everybody wants a big diamond um, and very fancy uh, intricate designs, but oftentimes uh, not, so much. not so much. Yeah, something more down to earth, inspired by nature, featuring some leaves and vines, or maybe a flower here or there. Mm -hmm. So um, this case is, is a quite bit more popular. understated. Yes. So yeah. do you, uh, do you often are you often asked for like raw diamonds, ones mm -hmm. that are not cut mm -hmm. or raw? Um, gems? That's a great question and it does happen from time to time um, and of course we can do that. We have a selection of raw diamonds or rustic diamonds are sometimes called. Some are literally not cut or polished at all. So it's it's sort of the original cuboctahedron shape um, and uh, other times they are semi-polished yeah. or yeah, it, it depends. There's so there's quite a few some options. So that they're not rough, they're not edges. Exactly. Yes, and and uh, yeah, kind of tumble down into a softer form, which will be easier to set into a ring. Into a ring. Yes, yeah, and that includes uh, salt and pepper diamonds. So diamonds which are more heavily included with little black specks inside them, which sure. can look very pretty in and of themselves. This is uh, another vendor that we work with from time to time. They uh, explored more contemporary materials, um, including meteorite and zirconium um, for different color metals. So for example, the black colors, um, but they're fantastic. We use them from time to time. When you talk about the metal work and doing the engraving, mm -hmm. are we talking about like the, the kind of engraving that's done on a band like this? Um, actually, no. So th this case is featuring different finishes, um, but for actual true hand engraving, this Ooh, case will... Much different. Yes, it, it's uh, really a... It's, it's a lost art. Um, it's becoming harder and harder to uh, get experienced jewelers who are trained and experts in hand engraving. And so obviously characterized by deep and intricate cuts into the metal using a sharp uh -huh. graver tool. Gosh, that's beautiful. I like the way that the light catches on the cuts. Yes. Right? Yeah. It polishes the metal as it goes in and so creates a, a nice bright um, reflective surface. Yeah. yeah but you have to know that it's hand engraved versus mm -hmm. run through a machine. Yes. It's yeah. another beautiful point. Yes, I think that's a big part of Greenlight Jewelry Works is uh, we want everything to be as handmade as possible. And there is a distinction between something which is, as you said, run through a machine. Um, um, Typically that sort of engraving is not as deep, it, it's not as nuanced in terms of its line weight. Um, so there is definitely value added uh, with having it hand engraved and it lasts longer as well. Having an artist. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, yes. it's kind of like the prince at the mall versus <laughs> yes, versus an artist painting. Yes. Well, thank you again. I think I have yeah. good material here. Okay, really you're very welcome. Material.